Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us again at the Academy of Being, where finding the power within you changes your life. So today I have with me a really close friend, Gina Hornbogen, and we wanted to talk about this topic that is really prevalent in so many people's lives, which is what do you do when you're tired of your life? What do you do when you're tired of your life or you're tired of the weather today? I don't know. But um, Gina, do you have any times in your life where you've just gotten tired of life? Oh, yes. Um, I can count many. Um, and I think where I was, like I was just in a place where like I felt hopeless. I felt like there was no end in sight. But then I would like, I guess, pay attention to things and think, all right, well, what can I do about this? Because I'm always in my brain and I, I like to, to operate there. But I started just feeling things like what made me smile? What made me um, ha have a little glimmer of enjoyment in my life? So I tried to find little pieces, little nuggets in the day, no matter how bad the whole day was, what little nuggets brought me joy? And I think a lot of times that was the people around me, my children, my animals, my animals brought me tons of joy over the years. And just like, where did I, those little smiles. And then I paid attention to those and I wanted more of them. Yeah. So let's go back for a second because not everybody's going to be so quick to jump to the hopeful moments. Um, what are some of the things that made you feel hopeless? Like, how did it feel um, in, in those moments and possibly like how, you know, how long did it take? I'm, I'm, you know, unless you're superhuman, cause I'm definitely not, I don't move from, oh, I'm aware I'm hopeless. <laughs> I'm feeling hopeless. And then boom, I've, I've got the answer, at least in, in my past, I certainly didn't. I really, I was in it for a long time because in that hopelessness, I didn't know the way out. Right. So have you been in it ever in your life where you were kind of feeling stuck, trapped and what was making you trapped? Oh, yes. Um, everything. I think it was it some at one point in my life, it was, you know, every, pretty much every circumstance. I think the only thing that brought me joy at that time was my children and I didn't have anything left for them when I got home. Um, my career had, there was some difficulty with partners and stuff like that. And it was just, everything was hopeless financially, um, career wise. like, it was just so much pressure, so much stress all the time that I didn't even want to get up in the morning. I, I actually ended up getting very ill. So it went on for years. Um, mm -hmm. I got very sick. And I think that was what was the turning point for me is realizing that if I don't do something different, I'm not going to be here. That's a big deal. I mean, this is, that's definitely um, just finding that everything's crumbling and I think that definitely leads to that feeling of hopelessness because I'm sure other people out there, and I, I felt it too, where it's not one aspect of your life. It's like one aspect of your life shows an issue and you go about trying to sort it out and then other areas start to crumble as well. And so during that time, before you got really sick, were you doing everything that you could to quote unquote fix quote unquote, fix the different areas that weren't going well. Yes. I thought if I worked harder, longer, put more effort in, if I, if I just did more, if I, I mean, I always continued to do, to follow like my, like heart and morals. And I thought, okay, that will be recognized. That will be seen. And I, it will all get better just because I'm, I always do the right thing and do the, I'm always a good person. I don't hurt other people. So I always thought that that would somehow make it all better. If I just, it just made people see that worked harder to get that 
point across, I guess. Yeah, it's interesting because I've talked about this with a few people lately. The whole concept that is definitely prevalent in the world, how you treat others is how you're going to be treated, right? So if, if I'm a good person, if I put good karma out into the world, then good karma is coming back to, to reach me. And what I've found by studying other people, by studying my own life, that really what it is, is how you treat yourself and from that overflow, how you treat others. I think there's, it's still interwoven, but if you leave yourself out, others will leave you out. If you prioritize everyone else, everyone else will prioritize them before you. If you give up your first fruits <laughs> to everyone else, they will take your first, first fruits and leave you with nothing. And so it's interesting because to me, the body also speaks so loudly, right? The body is constantly giving us messages and will demand that we do the things that we need. So in the end, when you were getting super sick, you had to prioritize yourself. Mm -hmm. Like you had to pull back from all the things. Yeah. And let other people step in because you just couldn't anymore. Um, I don't even know that you realized that at the time. Oh, I'm sure I did it. Yeah. So but, but I think I had no choice. Right. Yeah. That's the that's the magic of the body. Like mm -hmm. if we let it, if we really let it, it will lead us. And we don't have to get to the place where we're <laughs> at the end. We don't have to get there, but that doesn't mean I don't care how much work you do. Sometimes we're stubborn. I, you know, put my hand up. I'm stubborn. I can be rebellious and all those things. And sometimes my body has to really scream loudly at me before I'm willing to listen because this image of who I want to be in the world mm -hmm. is takes precedent over what my body is saying. So like if, you know, you were saying a minute ago, like you wanted to show up and be this good person and bless other people's lives and you know, be responsible. I, you didn't say that, but I, I know that. And, you know, do a good job, like do a great job, I'm sure in, in your world, because that's how you show up is 110%. So after you got sick and you pulled back, what did you, what came up for you then? Like what moments happened? Um, I don't know that I exactly remember it all. I think I just went on a quest of finding out who I was mm -hmm. and, and really trying to build that relationship. And I think that was part of my just inner like need mm -hmm. to find that out. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely still not <laughs> always good at it, <laughs> but I'm like really, I've really just, well, what lights me up? What makes me shine? What are those little parts of me that I stopped a long time ago? Mm -hmm. And because I think I got to the point where it was just always about production for me and how much I could get done and produce. And I thought that brought me happiness and joy, but it was empty. So I had to find the the really fulfilling parts because yeah. it was, it was, it was empty. It was without, yeah, I would do all this and, but it wasn't what I was seeking. It, it didn't fill me up. It didn't light me up. It was a, a little check off the list, but it wasn't truly making me shine in, inside. Yeah. So, it makes sense to me because a lot of people do it. Like they'll, but it, it's like, I just want to say it's an output, right? So there's an output of productivity or there's an output that's given to make somebody else, like bring joy to somebody else's life. I don't want to say make somebody else happy because we don't actually have the capacity. So that's an output. If you don't, like, if you don't have an input, you're coming slowly and slowly and slowly from the space of emptiness because you're always outputting. And so we really need sustenance, right? If you're going to go out and you're going to exercise, well, you need to make sure that you have fuel in order to do it. Two totally different things. People will say, oh my gosh, exercising fuels me. Like it's exciting. It's, it's wonderful. However, 
without food <laughs> and water and drink and right? like you're not going to get anything out of the exercise and so we don't talk enough about what we're inputting into us so that we can still be productive so that we can still interact with others and bring the overflow of our joy um i know for myself when i hit a huge rock bottom um at the end of my marriage I realized that I, my giving was really empty. And so a lot of the people around me who were saying it wasn't enough, it wasn't enough because I wasn't in it. I was doing the things, right? But I was doing the things almost like a robot or even a resentful robot. Um, Rosa, robot with an attitude that smiled. <laughs> like, you know, we can be really good at like thinking that we're pretending and or that everybody's believing the pretending that we're doing, but it seeps out of our, our pores that we don't want to do something because, or that we're just empty and doing it. And I realized at the end of my marriage that I had been empty for a long time. I had gone past the place of having any sustenance inside of me. And that wasn't good enough for anyone. Now we what I probably wanted is for him and other people in my life to say, oh, you know, go do something for yourself. Hold on, I, I got you. And that would have been nice. But when I look at myself, and I'm going to have a question here for a second, in a second. When I look at myself, I would have been the person that said, no, no, I got it. It's fine, I got it. Because even if I got what I think I wanted, which was somebody else to take over sometimes, they would have had to fight me tooth and nail <laughs> to take over some of my things because I was, you know, I, I want to say I was addicted to it, but it didn't feel that way. It just was part of my identity so much. Mm -hmm. Does that resonate with you at all? Oh, oh, totally. Um Absolutely. It, it resonates so much that I almost would have felt wrong or guilty for accepting that. Like I would have been like, no, 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 no. Like it, 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 it would have made me feel like not good to accept that from them. I was better at giving it out. It just, it, it gave me the heebie jeebies. Like, no, 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 no. I got this. Like, and I would not accept it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is something, you know, I don't know where it said, maybe it's through this whole idea of like serving, like that's serving is the greatest gift that you can possibly be. It brings the most happiness, but there's a misnomer here because it doesn't allow for people to realize the gift of receiving or to realize how much they need in that way. And also the gift that it is to somebody else to receive, because you, you know, the gift of producing and, you know, providing financially for, for your family, providing for your kids, providing for all the people who work for you, but allowing somebody else to have that gift with you, we're, we don't talk about that enough. Mm -mm. Like to pause enough that somebody can bless you and to make sure that you have people in your life that desire <laughs> to bless you, like desire to give and to make an impact on your life, right? And so kind of fast forward to today and, and maybe we'll pop back. These days, I know you spoke at the very beginning about taking those moments to pay attention um, but also, do you have more people in your life who pour into you? Yes. And I think I was always considered myself somewhat of a loner. Like I didn't need a big group of friends or anything. Like I didn't have really close friends. I was kind of, we moved some and I was always at a different phase of my life than most of the people around me. So I didn't, I, I was friends with a ton of people but not really like the, those deep connected um friends that 
you could tell anything, you know, I mean, I could laugh and have a great time with just about anybody, but those deep people that really deeply understood and knew me, I had very few of those. And that has changed now. And there's a lot of people in, and not still, I guess a lot is relative. <laughs> so what does that mean? But there is, there's some incredibly powerful, meaningful people and Terry, you are one of them, <laughs> but um, in my life that it's, it's like, I can share, they, they understand me, they fill me up and it's a two way street and not just only one. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And I can sense from you that that was something you sought after that place where you were in learning about yourself realizing your value wasn't just about productivity and fixing everything for everyone else, that it was this place of who you are, right? And like really starting to honor and value what makes you happy so that you could attract more of those people in. So I know for, for me that, that you've gone on a spiritual path and you've done different certifications and things like that is that by going on those um journeys is that where you met the people that fill you the most like by following your likes and going there yes that, yeah, okay yes I, I would say definitely that's where I mean, we're all very, very different, but it's, I think it's where it started and then it blew up from there. So does that make sense? Yeah, totally. The difference is exciting too, right? It's nice to yeah. be able to have slightly different interests so that you can continue to expand your horizons. Um, but enough of the same that you know that that's sustenance for your soul and for your body. Absolutely. Absolutely. So these days, because we're not perfect. So just because we've learned, you know, and, you know, as people say, learned a lesson to me, it's a, always an invitation from the universe to, to expand more, but all the way back when you were really struggling, you were super sick and you came to this place of knowing yourself, do you find that you still have moments or longer moments where life isn't what you love? And oh, absolutely, which is interesting because I thought I would like arrive. Yeah, <laughs> I, know, I, know. I was like, wait, I have all this knowledge, all this. Well, wait, why is this ever happening again? So that was kind of uh, new and interesting. But I think it, it's a constant. I know that I'm meant for not staying in one place and I know that I'm meant for following different paths and I fight it yeah <laughs> right I'm like no I'm good I'm good now so and it's funny because I uh <laughs> I I sometimes I'm a little stubborn and you know I'm like no this is this is good now and everything in me says it's not so yeah. <laughs> I, I just laugh so much because I'm so similar. Like I get into a space and I, I'm like, let's just go with this group. Come on. Like, you know, <laughs> is, like we've arrived, you know, so why would we not just continue on this? And yet there is definitely a part of my spirit and definitely my muse that is constantly asking me to try new paths to get out of my comfort zone, mm -hmm. um, to listen to... <laughs> Yes, spirit. <laughs> so crazy. I don't have my uh, reactions on, but Zoom really loves to <laughs> let the universe say that's a good point. But it's this space of are you willing to be led? You know, are you willing to really be led by what I call the muse inside? So it's my unique self expression, is what it stands for. And I know you know that. Um, but it's this. To me, it's a gremlin sometimes that's coming up and it's saying, I have so much more for you. Could you look over here? You could be more 
of a person than you ever thought you could possibly be. And you need to interact with these people or with this thing or this experience in order to be more of yourself. And I know you feel that way, but doesn't it ever make you feel like you'd rather stay in the, the true lane so that you could feel like you own all the information, like that feeling of, I feel like the master of things. And I want to stay here instead of like moving all the way back to the novice or, mm-hmm. you know. Oh, definitely. I, I, I love the knowledge, but sometimes it's like, no, I, I got enough of it. I, I like it and I, I'm good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't want anymore, but it's really not what it, it's really not the best for me. So when I really step back and look at it, that, that was, it's good for then. And now what else, what else, what is the invitation moving forward? Absolutely. And so right now, how do you lean into that? Even when you're being rebellious or stubborn? I think I, I, I try to remain curious and see where like little nuggets do kindle a little spark inside me somewhere Mm -hmm. where, I mean, and it's, it's simple things. Cause sometimes when, you know, like that notion of, oh, we'll just be positive. No, that that's that's crap. And I know you've talked about that many times before. It's not about being positive. It's about looking at just little moments in your life. Like um, two days ago, my I walked into the kitchen of my house and my daughters were doing something and they were giggling and they started giggling and laughing super, super loud. And I just, I like smirked my, I think my first gut reaction was cause I wasn't in a, I, I like was distracted. I was doing something. I was kind of like, my first reaction was like, what, what are they doing? And then I was like, wait, no, let me, let me see what they're doing. And I was just like a little curious about it. And then it brought a smirk to my, and by the end we were all laughing. I don't even know what we were laughing about. And I was like, <laughs> wow. Like how just my initial reaction, I was like, I don't have time for this to wait, what's so funny Mm -hmm. made a whole trajectory change in the day. Like in, in, so it's like, and then I like write, I try to write and pay attention to those things, write them down because we forget of a day of complete chaos and annoyance. And, and, you know, there's a lot of things that annoy me right now. So it's like all of that, it's like, okay, but wait, I had that, that moment that made me smile something just so simple and little that you could just pick out. And then I think it, it just, it kindles something in you. Yeah. I I love how you described it because so often we do, we're in our groove. It's like, I'm doing something, I'm serious. I'm getting shit done. Right. Yep. And so, like, this is disturbing me over here. And so there's a judgment, like, don't take me off whatever track I'm on or whatever mind place I'm at. And instead you just move to what is that? Like, what is that? Like, maybe I want to experience that. And it's not logical, right? It, it's like, do you really need that in your day? You have all this list of things. Yeah, that is fuel for your life. And I love that you also brought up the fact that we easily forget these moments. And so they don't infiltrate the rest of our life and we don't remember them like when we're looking back at 2023 we go I don't know I remember all the problems but I don't remember all these beautiful moments because you didn't let them take over you didn't talk about them enough you didn't write them down I I I love that you're doing that and it is something that we talk about often is how do you breathe life into those moments more you know one is letting yourself experience them, like being curious and just saying, oh my gosh, my knee jerk reaction is to like walk away from that and even stop it from them. But instead I'm going to dive in to it and then I'm going to write it down and I'm going to talk to more people about it because this is a moment I don't want to forget. Like I, I think 
when people are on their deathbed, they're not remembering, I was so productive. They're remembering those moments that touched them, right? Like, what is touching you in life more? Definitely. Yeah. So that's, you were saying, like, you still have moments where you move to that place of life isn't really what you want, right? We all get there. Like, yeah. you're like, oh, I created it. And wait a minute. No, <laughs> <laughs> something's not right here. And so those moments start to bring you back to life. And so how do you go about dealing with the fact that you don't have to be the master or perfect at things and that you can, you can still um, lean into the fact that this isn't it again. Like I'm being asked to move into a place of greater variety. Let's just say that, like, it's not like this path is wrong. You're not completely giving up everything that's on your current path. You're just adding more to it. So how do you lean into that? Well, I think there's always been, at least for me, when I, especially when I was younger, there was always been this notion of, of, of perfection. You have to do it perfect and right. And, you know, and I think now I, I just allow myself, I like judge my own self at times. I'm like, all right, there you go again. And I think I just like lean into what, what else is possible? What I like could just kind of be open, open to what else and that the struggle isn't necessarily wrong. It's because I tend to judge myself for the struggle. Like, okay, like, you know what, come on, figure this out, get, get, get out of this. And sometimes I think I just have to like nurture myself when I'm there and just really take care of me because it's not, I'm not wrong for being here. This is my place right now. And it's perfectly where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And then what next? What else? What, what else is possible when I'm ready? And if I want to stay in the snarkiness a little bit, I do. <laughs> I, I still enjoy those, those little moments. And then it's, I think it's my turn to decide when I'm willing to take that next step or to take that leap that maybe is a little bit too scary for me right now. And how, like, what it, it, I guess it's when I'm ready and it's, there's no judgment to w whether I'm ready today, tomorrow, or in a year from now. Right. Now, I love the fact that you're asking the questions now, whereas before there wasn't uh, how, when am I going to be ready? <laughs> like, so all the way back when you were really struggling with all the areas of your life and getting really sick, it was, I'm staying here. I'm going to do what I think is best. I'm going to keep being productive. I'm going to fix things. And all of life was saying, oh, no, <laughs> oh, no, we have something else for you. We want you to matter. So we're willing to have everything crumble for you to matter so much, like for you to actually support yourself. Whereas now, yes, the universe, your muse might be bringing different opportunities your way that you're not quite ready for, but you're willing to ask the question, you know, when am I ready? What do I need to get ready? What will allow it to feel safe enough? Like to me, we can walk in scared, but I don't want to walk in scared and then feel totally unsafe. I want to feel safe and scared, right? New, new thing, right. but have, you know, the people there that I need, or I know enough about it, or I've just gotten to that place where my intuition's like, this is a go. Um, I think that that's wise, but now you're asking those questions is what I want people to know. Asking the questions is what gives you the wisdom. Yes. And I think bringing in others as well, that you feel safe with and trusted because sometimes we need and even if they what they just like suggest um and uh, advice sometimes is you know but but sometimes anything that they offer even if you push back on it that helps bring you clarity inside so it's it's kind of like 
if you have those people that you can bring in and because I mean, I always felt I had to figure out everything on my own. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting how much collaboration can bring in your own life, just mm -hmm. of like somebody saying, oh, well, you should do this. No, that realization of the no is far <laughs> more powerful than anything that I could have, you know what I mean? Done my own on my own. Yes, <laughs> I completely <laughs> agree. We laugh about this all the time because I feel like people are aspects of my own brain and what's going on, my own system. And so I have often people who will say the opposite of what I want to do, but until I hear it, there isn't that guttural reaction, like no way. And we have really great friendships because we all know we're there as a sounding board and we don't take it personally when somebody like, so when somebody gives us an opinion and it's a no, or when we give an opinion and they're like, oh, thanks. You gave me the clarity that I needed. That's a no. Like you don't feel insulted that they didn't take your advice because we're really just helping each other find our own clarity. Mm -hmm. Coming back to that power. So to me, what you were being before, you were being totally independent, but that's toxic independence. Whereas now you're integrating, but you're bringing the power back to yourself to still make the decisions. It's not like I'm asking you and, oh gosh, now you as my friend, my partner, my doctor, whatever, you're now the authority over me, mm -hmm. which is so often what happens is because I asked you and you've given me your best advice, now I need to take it. Mm -hmm. No, you need to filter that through. What does that say inside of you? What is your system saying? And then give that feedback. If we could do way more collaborations, whether it's with our partners, our friends, or doctors, whatever, whatever authority is out there, I think we would all be happier. It's bringing that power within us back so that we can change our own lives in a way that works for us, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for showing up today and sharing your story. And we're going to have a few more conversations. And I hope that everybody who's listening will add comments below, any questions that they have, and like and subscribe. So thanks so much, Gina. I'll talk to You're you welcome. later. Thank you. Bye. Bye.